Peace be with you. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been six weeks since my last confession. I have so much to tell you, I don't know where to start. Just take all the time you need. Father, he wants to kill me. What? He sent some men after me, and I ran away. They were going to kill the baby, too. It's all right. It's going to be all right. You're in God's house. How about this, baby? A lips phone? Aren't these things great? I mean, they're gonna make a fortune off them now. Come on, guys. Admit it. Is this or is this not the most unusual telephone design you have ever seen? Now, now watch this. Ah, ah. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> I don't know, Murray. This stuff is weird. And a frog phone? Murray, don't you think you're going a little bit over the top with all these phones, huh? I mean, we already got a toothbrush phone in the head lead that you could dive in the state room. Yeah, what about that Elmer Fudd phone in the Mimi? You know, I took a FAA inspector up the other day. He looked at me like I was out of my tree. Oh, and I love that Elmer Fudd phone, Nick. Now, this is very exciting. I mean, this is a revolution in telecommunications, you know. Cellular phones with fun themes, you know. Phones you can take anywhere. Hey, you want to go long code? <laughs> you get it? <laughs> Where would anybody want to take a thing like this? Uh, Murray, you don't have any money invested in this company, do you? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, they're paying me a substantial uh, consultation fee just to sort of test their new product line. Hey, guys, I don't seem to remember a baby phone. But maybe it's in the box. You want to help me look? Anybody home? Yeah, come aboard. Right. Oh, hi, Father Bob. Hey. Oh, look at this. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> Father, who's your little friend here? Her name is Catherine. Katie, meet my friends Cody, Boz, and Nick. Hi. Hi, Katie. <laughs> oh, what's the matter with her, Father? Oh, Why is she crying so much? I think she misses her mother. You see, she was uh, abandoned in church this morning. Oh, abandoned? Oh, that's just oh, awful. How can anybody do something like that? Really? Well, in this particular case, we have a young mother named Cheryl who got herself into some trouble with certain people, and she's running scared. I got to know Cheryl through my work at the halfway house, and I'd really like to help her. You want us to help you find her, Father? Oh, that'd be great. Sure. Yes. Sure, we'll do that for you. But I gotta be honest with you, parish funds are really tight. Oh, well, don't worry about the money, Father. Come oh, yeah, he's right. Forget about yeah, it. You know that when you want our help, Father, you, all you have to do is ask. Oh, thanks a lot. Father, can I, can I give that a shot? Sure, I'll be my guest. Come on, come on. Oh, better say I'm so comforting. No. Oh, come on, Katie. Listen, we're not that bad once you get to know us. We're really not. It's okay. Nick, let me give it a try, okay? Uh, well, I mean, you, you're not doing well, it. You don't know any more about kids than I do. Well, I can't do any worse than you are, right? Yeah, I mean, Cody does have a way with people. Maybe that extends to little people yeah, as well. Yeah, okay, well, all right. Well, look, watch the, watch the neck, okay? You gotta hold it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, watch it. Watch it. I gotta, I gotta oh. relax, Dad. Well, you gotta... Hey, you gotta... Okay. Here you go. Oh, come on. Look at come on, that. come on. Oh, look at that. Well, what do you know? Hey, look at that. I did it. Yeah, well, once I warmed her up for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, listen, okay. Father Bob, um, just exactly what sort of trouble is Cheryl into? Oh, I wish I was free to tell you everything, Buzz, but everything I know, Cheryl told me in confession. What I know outside of the confessional is that her life is in danger and there are people looking for her. Well, I suggest we get to work right away. I hate to ask you this. I need another favor. In case those men who are after Cheryl come by the church, I think it would be better if Catherine stayed with you for safekeeping. 
Well, well, you want to? Do you want to keep her here? Well, d just until I can make other arrangements. Well, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, sure, Nick. Let's help him out. You know, it could be fine. Yeah, yeah but she's awfully cute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but we don't know. know we don't know anything about taking care of a baby. Oh, wow. so we'll figure it out. How tough could it be? Yeah. Are you putting me on? Yeah. No. No, no, no. Listen, Father Bob, have no fear because the Riptide Babysitting Detective Service is at your service. <laughs> Uh, that's great, Phyllis. Now you can get a snapshot of Cheryl at the halfway house. Father Bob, uh, before you go, uh, did you bring any diapers in that bag? I think our client just sprung a leak. I hope you have better news for me this time. We're still looking for Mr. Everett. What's going on? How is she evading you? I thought you were professionals. We're putting more men on it. Our people are everywhere. Mr. Holland said, don't worry. She ain't going no place. She better not. 25 years of my work hangs on this. We'll do our job. Maybe you ought to worry about doing yours. <sighs> Cheryl spent some time at some halfway house at King Harbor. Maybe somebody there knows where she is. We'll check it out. You can step on it any time, Mario. I'd like to get to Father Bob sometime today. What do you want me to do, Nick? Take a lot of chances with the baby in the No, of Come course. On. Look, don't lay that on me. Of course not. Mario, are those straps too tight? They look awful tight to me. Oh, no, no, Cody. They're fine. I really think they're you fine. You sure? Yeah, she's enjoying the ride. Catherine's just having a heck of a time. Look, look, Catherine. Here comes Mr. Bear. Hi, hi, hi. All right, Murray, what did you do? I, I didn't do anything to her. See, I told you we should have gone with the bunny. You guys don't want to listen to me, so you had to bring the bear. She hates that bear. She, didn't hate the she bear, hates Nick. it. When I was a little kid, I had a bear. I loved the bear. Look, the bear was my favorite thing. Tony, everybody knows that bunnies are where it's at when it comes to Smile. kids, all right? Smile. Look at Uncle Murray. Look at him, he's so funny. Gucci, Gucci. Gucci, 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 Gucci. Terrific. Now we're reduced down to his charwoman impersonation. I think I'm getting a headache. And this is our child care class. Yeah. There is so much to learn. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. And Father Bob, he is great about making sure we have the best teacher. Well, I don't know how my mom did it. I know, I know. Wow. Maybe I ought to take a course like this. Patricia, uh, have you heard from Cheryl at all? Uh, after Cody called, I asked everybody, and nobody's heard a thing. Yeah, but you were a roommate, right? So if she contacted anybody, it'd be you. Well, maybe. See, with Cheryl, it's pretty hard to tell sometimes. She pretty much keeps to herself. Even in discussion groups, she never really opened up to anyone. Yeah, it's okay. Can I hold her? Sure, yeah. yeah. She likes to be held, you know, sort of like this, but maybe with her head on your shoulder. Uh, okay, it's all right. Girls know about this stuff. She knows. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who's hungry. Yeah. Oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We did Katie eat last, huh? Yeah. Eat? Oh, yeah, see, where you set that hard? It's just kind of like Kim class. Yeah, you just sort of mix proportionately and... Patricia, would you have any reason to think that Cheryl might be in some kind of trouble? Uh, Nick, most of the girls here are in trouble. What kind do you mean? Well, Father Bob seemed to think that maybe some people were after her, you know, like... maybe her life was in danger. I wouldn't know about that. All I know is that Cheryl was having a lot of problems with her boyfriend. Mm. He sounded like some type of jerk. See, every time she tried to get him at work, he would never answer the phone. Then, when he called her, all they would do was argue. Is it ready now? Okay. I all think right. this is ready. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. It's all yeah, yours. Just, just give it to her? Here you go, girl. You want to? Just put it in her mouth? You want to? You want to? Oh, wow. Look at her go. Oh, well, there she goes. Oh, there she goes. It's great. Oh, I'm going to get you one of those for your birthday card. <laughs> Come on, girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, did Cheryl ever mention her boyfriend's name? Um, no. I, she, 
Oh, wait a minute. One time I overheard her on the phone and she called him Philip. Philip. Okay, guys, here's our girl, Cheryl Watson, summer of 1984. Uh-oh. Katie just threw up. It has that effect on a lot of women. This is a really boss clue, if I do say so myself. Very Mary, boss. I don't see what a bunch of old phone bills are going to do for us. I mean, 20 or 30 different people must use that phone every day. Well, you know, someday, Nick, I'm going to have to explain to you about computers, because then you'd know that a simple sublinear comparison of the uh, bills during Cheryl's stay and since she left will produce an isolated phone number common only to the days that she lived here. Yeah, get with the program, will you, Nick? Oh, I see. Not only are you a world authority on babies, but now it's computers. Well, okay. I have been reading yeah, up on the subject a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. come on, wake yeah, up. right. I don't believe this. We should have the number any moment now. Don't worry, this is incredible. I mean, this is all we have to do to find the boyfriend's number? Yeah, sure. All we have to do is sit back and wait for the numerical search sequence to do its work. Listen, uh, you think you could give me some lessons on this thing sometime? I mean, maybe when Cody's not around, you think? Nick. What? Really? Yeah. I mean, are you serious? Are you really interested in yes. this? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, sure, of course, anytime you want. I say if you're really interested i have some books that i think you ought to look at okay. first okay yeah well, i'm would serious. you like to see them yeah. i am yeah. right here here uh, uh the first one is called the uh, computers made easy and it's must reading though and then there's the uh, there's the hasberg that's a classic and then there's the melman volume one and volume two you know he talks about floppy disks he's got such a sense of humor hey can i read you a little hey bit? guys listen Info. listen i think there's something wrong with katie i really do she seems awfully warm to me what? you know Maybe she's got a fever. I don't know. She's sweating like crazy. Murray, how do you find a baby doctor? Well, Cody, you got her wrapped week? up like we're in the Arctic Circle. Huh? What are you, nuts? It's 90 degrees outside. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, see, I, I didn't want her to catch cold. Oh. You know, she's got such a tiny nice. little body. Hey, hey, hey guys, look. Sorry. This is it. It's Philip's phone huh? number right here. 213-555-3100. It's an L.A. City number, Murray. Let's try it. Yeah. Nice phone, Murray. How do you work? Oh, uh, I turn it over. Oh. And then just dial here. Now hit the speaker phone right here. Good. Now we should be able to hear everything. Murray, it didn't take you very long to find the number. Well, what'd you expect? It's a numerical search sequence. It doesn't take long at all. Huh. Police department, can I help you? This is the police department. Can I help you? <laughs> Maybe we'd better ask Father Bob a few more questions, huh? Tell us where she is. I told you, I don't know where she is. I don't know any girl that show up. Oh, you got another one here. That's Father Bob, Murray. I think you better call an ambulance. You know, it's good to see you girls finally did something right for a change. Considering you put those two toadstools on ice and save Father Bob's life, I'm not even gonna bust you for dismantling his church. You're not? What a guy. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant, are you feeling all right? What kind of a jerk do you guys take me for, anyway? Nick, Nick, don't say it. As far as I'm concerned, Father Bob's the best thing that ever happened to King Harbor. When the mob moves in like this and roughs him up and puts him in the hospital, he even makes three cartoon characters like you look good to me. Cartoon characters? Now, wait just a gosh darn minute easy, here. Easy, Murray, I... Murray, easy. What are you saying, Lieutenant, that Burns and Odell work for the mob? 
They've got mob connections longer than Basinski's little skinny legs and arms put together. But you can tell Father Bob for me. I'm going to put them on the grill, and I'm going to cook them good. And when I do, they'll talk, and I'll call you. Oh, by the way, Cody. Yeah. If you could ever find a girlfriend, you ought to marry her. It's the best I've ever seen you look. I'll call you. Yeah, he'll call us. I mean, since when did Quinlan ever call us anything but more insulting names? Mob connections. Cheryl's in serious trouble, man. Yeah, and that explains why the father couldn't keep Katie with him. Yeah, but didn't he understand that he was in danger, too? He sure did, Murray. Hey, Father. Hi. How Hi. you doing? Okay. Hi. Here's your girlfriend. Yeah, she missed you. Oh, baby. <laughs> She's looking great. <laughs> Guess you're gonna have to fill in for me on the parish basketball team, Cody. <laughs> can you still hit from outside the key? Oh, you bet he can. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, not bad, considering. At least the nurses are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> sure glad you guys happened by when you did. Thanks. Well, we didn't exactly just happen by for me. Murray found out that Cheryl's been making a lot of calls to somebody at the police department. Yeah, we, uh, we wondered if you knew anything about it. You know I can't tell you anything that Cheryl might have told me in confession. Look, Father, I, uh, I don't want to step over any ethical boundaries here, but, uh, would it have really hurt anything to tell us the key facts in this case? Father, why is Cheryl involved in organized crime? What? What Murray's saying is the guys who beat you up are mob-connected, Father. Mob? That's right. Now, Father, you're going to have to excuse me for saying this, but any church that has rules that keeps you from fighting people like that, it has stupid rules. Hey, Nick. Come on. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I don't see how you can stand it. Makes you wonder why anybody would want to be a priest. Yeah. Well, we all get into this business for different reasons, Nick. God has a pretty amazing recruiting system. In my case, when I was 19 years old, I was in love with a beautiful girl named Betty Stefani. And... One day, she found out that she was pregnant. And instead of coming to me or going to her family, she ran away. And that really tore me up inside. I never did find out what happened to her or to her baby. God was there for me. And now I'm going to be there for him. But I got to play according to his rules. about this, Dooley? I mean, taking care of a baby is a big responsibility, you know. Yeah, I'll see. We wouldn't leave her with anybody, but we got an investigation going. Yeah, no joke, man. You gotta really pay attention. It's a lot of work. Hey, Mary, get the bottle, will you? Uh, yeah, Robot's bottle. No problem, bud. I'm your man. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I got some here. Katie, it's Mr. Bunny. Oh, yeah, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Bunny. There you go. Hey, look, look, she loves it. Told you babies like bunnies. <laughs> okay, you made your point. Okay, now will you guys relax? I told you, I know what I'm doing. Now, you're probably not going to believe this, but I've had a lot of experience with babies. Oh, really? What kind of experience? Are you kidding me? My Aunt Jean used to take care of half the kids in the block. You just leave me with some diapers, a little bit of baby powder, and I'm at home with the family. I don't know, Dooley. No, I think it's gonna be okay, Cody. Listen, we're not gonna be gone for that long, right? Well, yeah, 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 I think Nick's right, uh, Cody. Good be honest. Yeah, and Dooley, uh, you know, we fully intend to be back by the time Katie has her nap. But just in case we're not, okay? <laughs> and you have any questions whatsoever, I bought some really boss books that should help you out. They're really state-of-the-art <laughs> baby books. Hey, look, bud, books might be okay for you beginners, but you are looking at a semi-pro baby handler right here. It's going to be okay. Yeah. We're not going to be gone for that long, really. Okay, Dooley, well, the contest is due back any time now. And if you have any problems at all, ask one of the girls to help you. Then again, no one man can really know it all, right, guys? Thank you. I think oh, she's going to be fine. Gonna you know, be come fun. on, please. Yeah. Waiter, guys, I got it covered, huh? Huh. <laughs> oh. Flesh for fantasy, baby. <laughs> Thanks. Now get out of here, you knucklehead. I'm gonna give him one more call. Come 
Mahoney. I've had it with the mother hen act. You just called the guy 15 minutes ago. Shh, I'm gonna call him again. Can we put the frog away? What if somebody sees us with this thing? There, there. You see? All right, you see? Well, answer it. You see? Okay, I, I, I knew something happened to her. Yeah, Dooley. What? No, you have the wrong number. No, this is not the King Harbor Surf Report. Well, I'm sorry. I hate these phones of Maurice. Could we put the frog hey, away? You're driving me crazy with this phone. Wait, guys, guys, shh. Oh, sh oh, I'm sorry. You're never going to believe what I just found out in there. What? what? You know how we're sure that Cheryl was calling somebody in this building? Yeah. All right, you know how Patricia told us that this mysterious boyfriend was also calling Cheryl? Yeah. Well, any calls made to King Harbor from here are toll calls, right? And therefore, they would show up in the master list of phone calls. Well, I checked that list. You want to know from whose extension those calls were made to the halfway house? Careful, this could be a trick question. Who? Commander Philip Everett. Hey, come on, man. We're out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Grab that. Yeah. yeah. Everett, don't you guys know who that is? Yeah, how can anybody not know? Oh. <clears throat> He's been on the news for weeks. He's going to be the next chief of police in LA. Yeah, I note that his name is Philip. Isn't Charles' boyfriend, Philip? Is that what this is all about? A guy trying to find an illegitimate kid. Well, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? If that's so, uh, that still doesn't explain why the mob is after Cheryl, does it, Cody? Well, I tell you what, why don't we go visit the proud pop and give him a cigar? Let's get out of here. So, what radio station you fellas say you're from? Well, sir, we serve as a consortium of classical stations that appeal to an intellectual urbane audience. That sounds good to me. I do have a full calendar, but how long is this interview going to be? Well, actually, Commander, we're not here to do an interview with you. No, sir, we're doing more of an investigative report. You see, we're taking a documentary view of runaway women, the L.A. dilemma. I tell you, Commander, it's going to be one terrific story once it gets out, I promise you. I'm sure it will be. Listen, uh, uh, Commander, um, we're looking for the whereabouts of one particular woman. Uh, does the name Cheryl Watson ring any bells for you? Cheryl Watson? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Not at all. I'll tell you what. Let me put you in touch with uh, public relations. I'm sure they can give you all the help you need. The thing is, Commander, we know that Cheryl Watson was making regular phone calls to this department. Yeah, and somebody on extension 7500 was calling back. I believe that's your extension, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Any number of our employees have access to these phones. Listen, I wish I could be more help to you gentlemen. I really do. I'll tell you what, the demands on my time are very, very severe at the moment. So <clears throat> I'll ask around about this... Um, Cheryl Watson. Cheryl Watson, yeah. And I'll get back to you. Well, Nick, I guess that means the interview is over, huh? Oh, look at this. Huh? Mm, look at this. It's funny how often a man's child will have his features, isn't it? Gosh, yes. Yes, it is. It's cute. And if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that Cheryl Watson's little girl is a dead ringer for our commander, Everett. It's a beautiful family, Phil, really. Is. All the kids have your eyes. We got problems. Now, what is it this time, Philip? A couple of guys just left my office. They were fishing around for a reaction about Cheryl. Well, they must be the same two guys who dropped on my men in the church. Why didn't you have them arrested? On what? A bunch of trumped-up charges? That's all I need right now. Well, all I need is to learn that I might have picked the wrong man for the job. Did I do that, Philip? Listen, Mr. Holland, you know I'm the right man. You know that. Now, you know when I'm the chief of police, this city is yours. Now, listen, we've been working together too long to let anybody come between us. I've got two good men in jail because of your girlfriend. You take care of them, and I'll put somebody on the two newcomers, whoever they are. And what if they can't handle it? And Cheryl talks. The press conference is the day after tomorrow. You are telling me how to do my job now? Are you, Philip? The man who jeopardizes all my hard work to make him police chief with a scandal with some bimbo waitress he got pregnant? Don't worry. I'm going to find that baby of yours and use her to flush out your lady friend. Hey, guys, I've got it all on this tape here. I mean, you aren't going to believe your ears. I mean, it, it, believe me. Philip Everett is working for Jimmy Holland and the mob. It's right here on the tape. Boy, Everett reacted a lot faster than I thought he would. It's a good thing you put that bug on so quick, right? Yeah, you know it. So this explains why Cheryl's running for a life, doesn't it? She has a fling with Phil. 
He gets her pregnant. She probably has the baby against his will, right? Yeah, and meanwhile, Jimmy Holland's been grooming Everett all these years to be the mob's man at LAPD. Cheryl and the baby become the largest single threat to the whole SCSI plan. Oh, wow. <laughs> not again. <laughs> Murray, these phones of yours are really getting to me. Clowns for you, Murray. Take this thing, will you? Here, this is great. Hey, guys. What? Huh? It's Cheryl. She's calling Everett. What's she doing calling on our line? Hmm? Oh, oh. Well, you see, while I was in the phone junction box tapping Everett's line, I installed a cellular relay board so incoming calls would also ring at this number. It's really boss. Just glad he's on our side. Tell me about it. Yeah, you can listen. Cheryl, where are you? I've been worried about you. Please, Philip, don't do anything to hurt her. I'd do anything you want. Just please don't hurt her. What are you talking about? Don't hurt who? I know those men work for you. The ones who took Katie and beat up Father Bob. How could you do this? Cheryl, I warned you. I told you not to have this baby. Now, you don't leave me any choice. Philip, please. I won't make any trouble for you. Really? I'd never tell anybody about us. All I want is a life for her. You owe her that much, don't you? Don't you? All right. If I give you some money, you can go away. You can have a state. Yes, anything. OK, where are you right now? I'll come and get you. Oh, wait a minute. What? This can't be happening. Let me guess. The clown doesn't work, right? I can't believe this. Hey, Murray, the clown's got to go. Well, <sighs> oh, I tell you, Everett's setting her up, man. You know that? Yeah. What do we do now? Guys, we got to do something. She doesn't know Everett works for Jimmy Holland, and if they get to her before we do, she's dead. What do you mean you let him go? I didn't say I let him go. I said somebody let him go. The paperwork came in from downstairs, so what happens? The bureaucracy fouled up. They walked. I don't believe this. You know something? It's a real comfort to see a tax dollar as hard at work. You know, it ain't no big deal. They weren't going to talk anyway. What are you what talking are you about? Me? You know, this isn't the first time I've ever interrogated anybody, gentlemen. Those birds weren't going to sing, believe me. Well, of course they weren't going to sing, Lieutenant. Would you like me to tell you why? They weren't going to sing because they knew they were going to be released. That's why. Is that right? And how did they know that? Mental telepathy or something? I told you it was a screw-up, that's all. Yeah, that's the way it looks, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, what would you say if I told you that we have certain information that will rock the police establishment to its very foundation? What the hell is this geek talking about? He's talking about Commander Philip Everett. Everett works for Jimmy Holland. <laughs> Everett and Jimmy Holland. You know, sometimes I think you three idiots ought to join a comedy team and go on the Johnny Carson show. Hey, listen, we talked to Everett, all right? Now, we know he's dirty. We're going to prove the fact that he ordered Father Bob's beating. Among a lot of other things. Let me just tell you something about Commander Everett. He fought for budget increases when nobody else cared. He fought for salary increases when nobody else would. He made this academy something when no one else could or would or cared. Gentlemen, he's not only a great man, he's a great cop. Mm. So you take your fantasies and go peddle to some movie studio because it won't play with me. Now get the hell out of here. Yes, sir. Thanks for your help. That's it. I knew we shouldn't have left Katie with All you. Right. Where okay, are they? Listen, will you just relax? He probably just took her for a walk. Hey, okay. guys. Dooley, where the hell have you been? I've been looking all over for you. We just went up the beach for a little walk, man. No problemo. She looks pretty tough with those shades on, don't you Take think? Take them off, will you? See, I told you she'd be all right. See, you worry for nothing. I just hope she isn't burned. The sun's awfully bright. Hey, oh, guys, listen, all right. I made a major discovery on the beach thing. You should check this out. What? Having a baby in your arms is like a bikini magnet or something. All I had to do was cruise by some promising talent. Zap, zap, zap. They were all over me asking me, can I hold her? Are you married? She's so cute. <laughs> Ever saw anything like it before in your life? Oh, yeah, you see this? We never saw anything like the mess you left us. Well, she had to eat, didn't she? What? what? You didn't you, you, you you better pizza? That stupid, are you? <laughs> hey, guys, come here. I think I found Cheryl. Listen what? to this. I know those men were working for you, the ones who beat up Father Bob and took Katie. Okay, now remember when we first listened to this tape and we commented how annoying these sounds in the background right. were? Yeah. yeah. All yeah, right, I well, I accessed the street maintenance bureau computer for the schedule of all their repair crews. Okay. That's a good thing, you were. Oh, thanks, Cody, but actually the uh, street generators kind of gave it away, you know? Oh, Cody, try and keep up, okay? 
Assuming from the level of traffic noise that uh, Cheryl was calling Everett from a phone booth somewhere in the city, mm -hmm. I went to the phone company files and I requested the locations of all paid telephones in the city streets. You know, I bet the computer just cross-checks the addresses, right? The numerical search sequences? <laughs> That's very good, Nick. Well, That's exactly right. That's amazing. It's a gift. Hey, here we go. 919 Hearst Street. That's where we start looking for Cheryl. Well, let's go. Hope we're not too late. Okay. Hey, hurry, hurry. Yeah. Well, Nick and I check this out. Now, we've got to come up with some way to prove that Everett is really Katie's father, okay? Okay. Got it? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Hey, how am I supposed... How am I supposed to do that? Oh, my face is very red. My face is red. I am so sorry that I'm late. But, you know, the commissioner's personal appeal has really a burst of enthusiasm for this blood drive. Can I go right in? I'm you so sorry. You not. What is all this about? Well, it's 3 p.m. It's time for Commander Everett's blood donation. Well, this is the first I've heard about it. Really? I don't have it written in my book, which means it does not exist. It's not in your book? It isn't possible you've made a mistake. I don't make mistakes, young man. No, of course you don't. What a silly Billy I am. That's a lovely tie. You know, my office has been very lax about the memos lately, and probably you didn't... I'm so sorry you didn't get this. But it's all over town. I'm sure you've heard that Commissioner Federson's mother is very ill. Commissioner's mother? Yes, he says it's tragic, really. It's tragic. But, you know, I think it's a very good idea of the commissioners to have asked for a, for a list of all those officers who have given a blood donation in his mother's name. Don't you think that's so he could thank them personally? I think it was a lovely thought. Yes. And, you know, he's, he's especially going to really appreciate the commander's donation because the Feddersons are very close to Mama. Yes, they... I love that color on you. Thank you. You know, I've been trying to keep that uh, plan what of mine this? alive. It's just... Oh, Commander, this man is here about Commissioner Feddersons' blood drive. It's for the commissioner's mother. What? Well, I knew you'd want to participate. The Feddersons are so close. Oh, of course. Well, as long as we hurry it up, I've got appointments to keep. Oh, no, no, I'll be done in a jiffy. Street repair by a payphone. Murray was right. Yeah, nice neighborhood, too. Cheryl's staying here. She's really scraping rock bottom. Well, it's worth a look. Yeah. One of these ought to be the manager. Nick. Man, yeah, talk about time. Believe me, ask Father Bob. Well, I'm not lying. Who just saved your life back there? Come on. Look, if you don't believe me, call the Father, okay? He's in King Harbor General, room 411. Huh? I can't believe I was such a fool to have trusted him like that. You guys hadn't found me when you Listen, did. Listen, Cheryl, we know how bad this all is, okay? But you can take it easy. Everything's gonna be all right. He was gonna have me killed, Nick. And Father Bob. But Everett's guys didn't pull it off. Oh, we got to you first. Yeah, as far as Father Bob's concerned, the last time you talked to him, everything seemed okay, right? Didn't he? Yeah. Okay. I'm really glad he wasn't seriously hurt. He told me how the doctors were just making a fuss over him because he's a priest and everything. How did you guys find me anyway? Well, that's a pretty long story. You see, we've got this partner who's a computer whiz, and he uh, traced your call to Everett's office from that payphone. Goodness for computer whizzes. <laughs> you can say that again. 
can't wait to see her. God, I really missed her. Yeah, I certainly understand how you feel that way. I should have known Father Bob would never let anything happen to her. Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Great. Well, watch hey, your step. Watch your step, Hi, Joe. This is Katie's mother, Cheryl. I'm, Hi. I'm gonna bring her top side. Boy, Cody, she's not here. I thought you knew about that. What? What, what, do, you what do you mean? What are you talking about? What? What? Julie, what? what are you talking about? Two Come cops on. came by and said that they had to take Katie to the authorities. I thought you guys knew about that. That's perfect. Damn it. Okay, I'm almost finished. Now, the theory behind all this is that certain unusual genetic traits will show up both in the blood of the father and the baby. Murray, is this something we can prove in court if we have to? Oh, yes, Nick, yes. And in this particular instance, the uh, numerical probabilities are over 95%. You see, Katie happens to be an HLA type B64, which is very rare. Now, Cheryl doesn't have that particular antigen in her white cells, which means that the father has to. It's the same sort of uh, tissue typing that they use in organ transplants. Okay, here we go. Oh, boy. Bingo, just as I thought. Everett has B64. You guys, what good is any of this? He's got Katie. Who knows what he's gonna do with her? No, I don't think he'd hurt Katie. That's right. A baby that can't testify can't do anything to him. It's you he wants. See, Katie's just insurance for him. He won't hurt her. You guys saw how desperate he is? He thinks Katie and I are the only things that stand between him and this police chief job. Well, listen, forgive me for asking this, but how did you and Philip Everett ever... Murray, Murray, oh, come on, okay. give her a break. Philip Everett can be a real charmer. He's romanced an entire city. How can a girl alone stand a chance with him? You know, he's got my little girl. <laughs> Cheryl, I want you to understand we're not going to let anything happen to Katie, okay? You know, I think this plan of ours is going to nail him. Well, showtime. Come on, Cheryl, it's up to you now. Uh. Oh, Philip? You win. I don't have it in me to fight you anymore. That's great. The press conference is about to start. Now, I have to go now, but I'm going to break it up. Yeah, give him hell, guy. You got it. Okay. Okay, just hang on and do what I told you. If you'll all take a seat, we'd like to begin. Okay, here they come. Get ready. Philip couldn't make it. He sends his regrets. Okay, hold it. Put the baby down and back off. Uh. So, oh my God, I'll blow you away if you don't put it down. You better think again, friend. You're as good as dead, lady. No, you think again, friend. Give it up, boys. 
Keep pal, now you gotta put her down. Put her down and back off! As you know, today is the day that we promise to announce the appointment of our city's new chief of police. Hi, how are you? Very uh, nice to see you. Let's see, uh, see some uh, credentials. Credentials? Yeah. Well, you see, I'm late, and it's my first day on the job. Yeah, but they're going to fire me. I'm such Papers. a silly villain. And so it is a distinct honor, a personal pleasure for me to introduce the man who has proven that law enforcement can work. I think they're right there. There's Where? the credentials. Our right next there. chief of police. Philip Everett. Philip. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Stop! It's this really an honor. Philip Everett is a fraud. He is not fit to hold my office. My name is Basinski. I'm a private Here, investigator, it. and I have evidence to show that this man has an illegitimate child, and he's making oh, deals with organized crime. This guy is obviously mentally disturbed. Now you see, it's just this kind of pathetic social tragedy that goes hand in hand with crime. If you don't believe me, then listen to the cassette I brought. It shows, shows him making a deal with Jimmy Holland. And uh, right now, while this press conference is going on, Jimmy Holland's thugs are trying to kidnap an innocent woman and her child, uh, whose father is none other than this man, Commander Philip Everett. Bunch of trumped up charges? That's all I need right now. Well, all I need is to learn that I might have picked the wrong man for the job. Did I do that? Commander, listen to this. No, this is a setup. This is a setup. Listen, Mr. Holland, you know I'm the right man. You know that. Now, you know when I'm the chief of police, this city is yours. Now, listen, we've been working together too long to let anybody come between us. I've got... How long no you know? Did you know you were being investigated? Uh, sir, I have no you know, Mr. What are you doing? Let go of me here. Hey, what's going on here? Cheryl and Katie have a plane to catch. Okay, Father, we just wanted something to remember about. It's gonna be a long time before we see these two again. Gee, I wish you weren't going so far away. I mean, Coldwater, Michigan is an awful far place to take a little girl here. I know it is, Murray. But well, we gotta try and start our lives over. I think your home is probably as good a place as any. You're gonna be just fine, I know it. I hope so. I really don't know how to thank you guys enough. That's all right, no thanks are necessary. Let me give her a kiss. Come on, baby. Come here, Katie. Say goodbye. Goodbye, sweetheart. Okay, come on, come on. Uncle Murray. Come to Uncle Murray. <laughs> Hi, baby lady. Mm. Sure. Yeah, you be sure to uh, send some pictures sometimes, okay? On the birthdays and everything. Thank you, Murray. Careful now. Daddy? Hello, Katie. Hello. Boy, am I going to miss you. Bye bye, honey. It's gonna be strange not having a baby around here, isn't it, guys? And you were so good with her, Cody. Kinda makes you think how nice it'd be to raise a child, doesn't it, boys? Hmm. 